Here we're going to be looking at mathematical induction, which is a type of proof. And to begin this discussion, uh, we need to talk about what's called the principle of mathematical induction. So let P of n be a property defined for integers n, and let a be a fixed integer. Suppose the following statements are both true that p of a is true, and that for all integers k greater than or equal to a, if p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 is true. Okay, now the first of those two statements is associated what, with what we're going to call the basis step, and the second of those two statements is associated with what we call the inductive step. We're going to go through an example where we see both of those steps uh, in a proof. So if both of those two statements are true, then the statement that for all integers n greater than or equal to a, p of n, is a true statement. Now let's make an analogy, because induction is a concept that's a little bit difficult to uh, get accustomed to, um, but I hope this analogy will help. So let's say you're setting up a string of dominoes, you know, in in order to knock them all down. Okay. Um, now, in order for that to be successful, two things have to be true. First, you need to knock down the first domino. And the dominoes have to be set up in such a way that whenever one domino falls, the next domino falls. Okay. That's really how mathematical induction works. We need to show that the first integer makes this property true, and we need to show that if one integer makes it true, then the next integer also makes it true. So let's look at a particular example. Uh, this is exercise number one in section 5.2. The instructions to that example say use mathematical induction to show that any amount of money of at least 14 cents can be made up using three cent and eight cent coins. Okay. Now, built into this is this idea that we can use any amount of three and eight cent coins. Okay. We're assuming that such coins exist. And um, we cannot use any other denomination of money. So here's how the proof would go using mathematical induction. So we're going to let P of n be this statement that the amount n cents can be made up using only 3 cent and 8 cent coins. And we want to show that that P of n is true for integers n greater than or equal to 14 using mathematical induction. So we start with the basis step. And the basis step is to establish that this works for the first integer on that list, namely 14. So P of 14 is true because 14 cents can be obtained using two 3 cent coins and one 8 cent coin. So the basis step is quite straightforward, which is often the case in a proof by mathematical induction. The inductive step uh, is the real challenge here. So suppose that K is any integer with K greater than or equal to 14, such the amount such that the amount k cents can be made up using only three cent and eight cent coins. We want to show that the same must also be true for the amount k plus one cents. Okay, so this is where we kind of think about that analogy with the dominoes. We want to show that if the, the k cent domino uh, is true or falls over, then the k plus one cent domino falls next. So suppose we have a collection of three cent and eight cent coins with a total value of k cents. Okay. By our inductive hypothesis, we suppose that that was, a, that was possible. Uh, since k is greater than or equal to 14, uh, one of the following has to be true. The collection of coins contains at least one eight cent coin, or the collection of coins contains at least 
five three cent coins. Okay, now you may you know want to take a moment and kind of think about why one of those things has to be true, but again, the key is that k is greater than or equal to fourteen. If there's an eight cent coin in the collection, then it would be possible to exchange one eight cent coin for three three cent coins, and that's going to increase our total by one. It'll increase the total from k cents to k plus one cents. Now, if there are five three cent coins, uh, then the we have the option of swapping out five three cent coins, taking two eight cent coins in their place, and that would also increase the total by one. So because we either have an eight cent coin or five three cent coins, and perhaps both, but as long as one of those two things, uh, one of those two options is available to us, we have a way of increasing the total by one. And that's what we needed to show. So we've shown that if p of k is true for any integer k greater than or equal to 14, then p of k plus one is also true. This, combined with our basis step, completes the proof. Okay, so that's an example of a proof by mathematical induction. The next section in the textbook uh, we're working out of also deals with mathematical induction, and it uses it in some slightly different uh, types of statements than appear in 5.2, but it's still the same essential strategy. Okay, so that will be our next video. Thank you.